Hey guys, it's Frank Amisco, here to show you how to kill the bosses of the second elite dungeon, the Dragon Ken Laboratory. Now the first boss you're going to find is Astalarn, the first Celestial. He's going to attack with Mage and Dragonfire. The first ability you're going to want to watch out for is the Pulsar, which is going to deal around 2000 AoE damage every couple seconds. You'll get a notification when he summons one, and you're going to want to kill it as soon as possible. His next ability is the Black Hole. The boss will summon one of these and some neutron stars shortly after. You just need to lure the stars into the black hole to turn it white, but avoid standing in it because it deals rapid heavy damage. Once the black hole turns white, it'll give a damage buff to whoever stands inside it. So that's a good time to use your ultimates and get all your damage in. His last ability will be some blue orbs that rain down on about half of the room. It's similar to a Raxor's Darkness special, where damage rapidly ticks low at around 50 and increases over time to around 450. To avoid it, just move to the other side of the room until it's no longer visible on your screen. The next boss is Varak Lith. His attacks are all magic and dragon fire with one melee ability. For his first ability, you'll get a notification saying Varak slams his tail against the ground. You want to switch to protect melee or use resonance before it hits. Each player will get hit with a pillar that has 15,000 health. The boss is immune to all damage until all pillars are destroyed. His next ability will hit each person with a different projectile type, which will bounce off them into the air. You need to stand in the zone underneath it to absorb the attack, then deliver it to any pile of eggs other than the style received. Sometimes you'll get a notification saying that a black dragon is dive bombing you. This is followed by a red circle that tracks you for a couple seconds, followed by a dragon fire line, like Vindictus. To avoid it, just walk diagonally away from the circle. The last ability is a fire tornado attack. The boss will shoot a slow fireball attack which explodes into a square of fire. Shortly after it disappears, a bunch of small fire tornadoes will spawn and slowly track each person, dealing heavy damage on contact. You can see my teammate died to that because he thought the attack was over. The final boss is the black stone dragon who attacks with all styles. His primary auto attacks are AoE magic damage, so if you're in a team, you want to stay away from each other to avoid taking multiple hits. Sometimes he'll shoot spike projectiles at you, which will spawn a bunch of spikes under your location for high melee damage. This can be avoided by just moving a few squares over when you see the attack coming. If you get hit by the spikes, you'll receive a debuff that decreases your adrenaline gain for a few seconds. Eventually, the boss will spawn four giant hands and move to the center of the circle, where it will use a melee range dragon fire attack and its black AoE magic attacks. Each hand has 80,000 health and needs to be killed before you can damage the dragon further. The hands will sometimes release lines of shadow tendrils that deal extremely high damage, so avoiding them is your top priority in this phase. After you kill the hands, the dragon will start to use a fire attack that encircles him, starting far away and closing in. You can surge out of it, or just walk through the gap in the fire. Later in the fight, the dragon will start to jump around, releasing clouds of fire that branch out each time. The dragon is immune to damage while doing this, and the fire can expand to cover a very large portion of the stage, so just focus on avoiding it until the boss stops moving. The fire can deal upwards of 3000 damage per tick, so mobility is important in this stage. And that's all there is to it. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments, and I hope you liked the video.